In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we talk all about high-intensity interval training. We're in the summer. That means most of you are really interested in peeling down those fat layers so that everybody can see your sculpted and amazing body. Oh, yeah. At the beach or at the pool or, you know, just washing your car, taking your shirt off. Right, Justin? Uh, every time. <laughs> yeah. So HIIT training. You're welcome, Ms. Johnson. Very effective. Unfortunately, most people do it very wrong. If you do HIIT training wrong, uh, you're not going to reap the benefits of it. So in this episode, we talk about the things that you should focus on to make your high-intensity interval training super effective. Also, this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Felix Gray. Now, Felix Gray makes some of the best blue light blocking glasses you'll find anywhere. One of the reasons why we like them so much is the Felix Gray glasses don't change the color of the room. They're not orange or red glasses. You don't look weird. It uh, doesn't make your food unpalatable. Palatable. You guys ever try eating food with red or orange glasses? It's really weird. It's weird. The Felix Gray ones are relatively clear, but they still block a great deal of blue light. And wearing these glasses a couple hours before bed improves your sleep. Studies prove this. If you walk, if you work on a computer all day long, it'll also prevent eye fatigue and help with concentration. Anyway, we have a Mind Pump link. If you want to go check them out, go to felixgrayglasses.com. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com forward slash Mind Pump. Um, and you'll get free shipping and free returns. Also, this episode is all about HIT training. We have a high-intensity interval training program that we created ourselves. All you have to do is enroll, go online. You got the video demos. You got the workout blueprints. You got the flow sessions. Everything is spelled out and done for you. So all you got to do is follow the program, and you'll get remarkable results. It's a home gym-friendly workout as well. A barbell, dumbbells. You don't need lots of equipment. That's pretty much it. And you can do the whole HIT workout. Now, this whole month, we're putting that program 50% off, half off. So here's how you get that discount. Make sure you pay attention. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com and use the code HIT50. That's H-I-I-T-5-0, no space for the discount. Boys, we are officially in summer. Oh, it's hot. (laughs) This is all them sexy bodies are coming out now. Yeah, this is uh, fat loss season. It's uh, bikini weather, Justin. Oh, it is? That's right. Did oh, wow. You get your I, better, okay? I better wax my get cakes. Get your two-piece ready. <laughs> what did you say? Wax your cakes? Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> get rid of all the hair. You That's know what gross. I mean? Yeah. Uh, no, this is when everybody really pushes hard to typically get leaner. For sure. You know, when I was growing up, uh, cut season was right around summer. Yeah, Bulk it's, season it's was- It's crunch time right now. Was, yeah. You got to show it. And so I think it's, um, you know, it's important we talk about some of the most effective- exercise ways to burn body fat. Now, one that pops up a lot is high-intensity interval training. Um, Studies show that with shorter periods of of training, high-intensity interval training, also known by its its acronym HIT, um, burns as much body fat as other workout styles in shorter periods of time. In other words, you could do 20 minutes or 30 minutes of HIT workout and get similar results to a 45 or 60 minute, you know, other type of, uh, of workout. Um, I remember too, when the first, uh, early two thousands, yeah, it was early two thousands, early two thousands. I remember too, I remember being a personal trainer and, uh, you know, coming across the, the first bit of research that was done on hit training and, uh, like usual in our space, that's, uh, right away, just, then it would turn into a trend. Then for mm-hmm. probably, I don't know, a couple of years there, I'd say that's how you saw almost all the trainers in the gym, uh, we're now training. Oh, yeah. You saw that, and then you saw these different variations of like time signatures and different cycles, Tabata type of hit. Yeah. So it just it evolved into a lot of different forms of it, but that became like the gold standard of how to train everybody. Right. Now, we've talked about this many times on the show, um, but I, I want to kind of restate it. You know, cardio type exercise uh, does burn a lot of calories. It actually burns more calories in the time being spent than, than resistance training type exercise. But that's not the whole story, of course. Um, you want to, with resistance training, you actually teach your body to burn more calories on its own. You speed up your metabolism. With cardiovascular type training, you tend to teach your body to become more efficient with calories. Um, in other words, you slow your metabolism down, which can make fat loss uh, and maintenance much more difficult in the long term. One of the biggest uh, challenges I see with HIT 
type training is that people use it uh, with cardio and they don't use it with weights. Uh, I think you can utilize the effects, uh, you know, the benefits of HIT training with its calorie burn, but also mitigate the metabolism slowdown effects that you can get from lots of cardio. So a lot of people don't know this, but you can do HIT training with weights and you can do HIT training with cardio. Mm -hmm. Both of them are a bit different. HIT training with cardio looks, you know, like this. I'm on a treadmill and then I'll sprint. Uh, for you know an all-out sprint or whatever for 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and then I'll do a slow jog or a walk uh, for a minute or so, get my heart yeah. rate to come back down. Or you just see a ton of burpees followed by jump squats followed by you know anything else that will just like exhaust you immediately, uh, calisthenic wise. So well, and just the, smash it all together. The real the real benefits that come from this is it's the variation of the heart. It's mm. the hard spike to where you you reach close to your maximum heart rate, and then it's the recovery time to come back down, and then it's the returning back to that. And I think the idea is that because it's not high intensity training for a long duration, you're not sending that same signal to your body that you're doing cardio purely for a half hour or hour because you're allowing the heart rate mm. to come back down and then spike up again. I think that's where the muscle sparing piece to this comes it does but it gets even better when you do your hit training with weights. weights so rather than doing the cardio aspect of it uh, or version of it use weights where you may, you may and it, it, it kind of re, it resembles a circuit right it's similar to a circuit you're going from one exercise to another with minimal rest getting your heart rate up then you take a break like you would with hit cardio allowing your heart rate to come back down and then you repeat the cycle um, now, why is that better than doing HIT training with cardio? Well, first off, when you use weights, remember weights are extremely versatile. Uh, there's a there's a, a you know hundred different exercises per body part on my body with weights and resistance. There's uh, I can train my body very specifically to what it needs. If I have forward shoulder, if I have a particular a particular posture. You know, issue. If I have pain in one area, if I have overdeveloped quads and underdeveloped glutes, you know, if I want to build aesthetics in a particular way, with weights I can mold and modify my routine. The other thing too with weights is if you do a good hit routine with weights, you are training yourself in a very balanced way. What does hit training look like with cardio? The same movement over and over again. You're doing the same patterns over and over. So if you're on a treadmill, a bike, or a rower, and you're doing your hit training, it looks the same. I'm, I'm, I'm sprinting, but I'm doing the same thing over and over again. And that can turn into you know muscle imbalances and injuries. Um, and it doesn't send uh, a muscle building signal. Now, to be fair, HIT training with weights doesn't send the loud muscle building signal that you're going to get with uh, traditional resistance training. But it definitely sends more of a signal than HIT cardio. Right. That's mm -hmm. for sure. And why is that important? Well, if you're, you, know, you probably want to burn body fat and not muscle. Most of us don't want to lose muscle. We just want to burn body fat. And even if you don't care too much about how much muscle you have, you probably care about the fact that when you do lose the weight that you're looking to lose, that you don't end up having to maintain that weight with super low calorie diet. That's a very, very difficult position to be in um, long term. It's hard. you know. If you, if, you, if you burn a bunch of body fat and now you're 1,500 calories, anything over that makes you gain weight, that's a tough position to be in in long term. And, and hit, hit with weights – prevents that well i also think it's a a safer form i remember you know programming this for clients that were you know above the age of 40 50 years old and and doing these you know circuit based type of routines and the traditional thing that you see a lot of people is battle ropes jump boxes a lot of dynamic plyometric type mm -hmm. of movements to get their heart rate up and quite frankly most of my clients that were above the age 40 had no real business doing something like that just to elevate their heart rate so I would way prefer to take a pair of dumbbells and do bent over rows with them or shoulder presses or squats uh, to get their heart rate elevated mm -hmm. and hit that max heart rate before they come back down, opposed to jump boxes mm -hmm. where there's a much higher uh, rate of injury. So, And that was one of the biggest things that as a, a boss of trainers that were doing this for probably a few years because it was so popular, you know, I started to get more and more of these clients coming with injuries and aches and pains with their joints. So that's one of the things that you have to take into consideration 
when when you're training this way and you're using things like plyometrics or purely cardio to get the benefits. There's definitely a, a risk versus reward uh, to, to all this, and that's why exercise selection is a very important piece to all this if we are to include weights and uh, to make sure that you are performing these with – you know, good form because you're still teaching your body this skill. You're teaching your body how to respond to this type of a movement. And we don't want to teach bad behavior because that's what you're going to carry with yourself just trying to get through the reps. Yeah. Now, when Justin says bad behavior, what he's talking about is your technique. Yeah. If you train wrong, you get good at training wrong. What you train gets stronger. The pattern that you practice is the pattern that becomes your default pattern. Um, here's the other reason why the you know those hit routines don't work really well when they're doing like you said jump boxes and jumping jacks and burpees. Those movements uh, do have some value when used appropriately. Jump mm-hmm. boxes, if you do them in plyometrics correctly, you build lots of power. When you're just jumping up and down on a box, it doesn't matter that you aren't jumping on a box. You do something else. You're just getting your heart rate up. Yeah, well, I mean, even burpees. I remember it's funny because we've kind of uh, clowned on burpees a little bit. Well, mainly because what you see when when people start to get fatigued, they, their their hips sag, they they smash their whole body into the ground. It just turns into this ugly mush of an exercise. Whereas there's a way to do it where you can still maintain composure and you know get get your body to do exactly what you want it to do in the movement. Right, right. So weights for hit training are superior. Of course, put together a good balanced routine because you are still getting a little bit stronger. You're still strengthening your muscles. Again, it's not a pure strength training routine. It's more of a calorie burning routine, which is phenomenal in the short term. But with weights, you're still sending somewhat of a, a resist of a, a muscle building signal if you do it properly. So also the exercises you put together, make sure they're balanced. Make sure they're not all pushing or all pulling or all squatting, right? Well, there's mm-hmm. also a, a lack of emphasis on uh, mobility. Uh, I mean, that was the big problem. Oh, that's a big thing I, that I saw was when I look at all the programming done on this. If there, I mean, mobility belongs in in every routine, no matter what your goal is. I don't care who you are. Uh, it's just how much of that. It just depends on how mm-hmm. bad you need it. But it belongs in every program. It especially belongs in something like high intensity interval training. Totally. Oh yeah. Uh, if there was ever a, a time that you needed to make sure to incorporate some sort of recuperative thing for your joints and your body, it would be when you're training at a yeah. high intensity. This is the biggest knock on high intensity interval training. It puts so much uh, force and sheer forces on the joints like that you have to account for and to, to not have in place a plan to fortify those joints and to maintain the health of, of and function of the joints is going to be to your detriment 100%. No, that's totally true because one of the biggest weaknesses of this type of training is injury and poor uh, patterning. Poor recruitment patterns of the muscle. By the way, re- re- recruitment pattern just refers to the order and the way that your muscles fire. Remember, your muscles move your body, and there's an ideal way that they can fire, and then there's less than ideal ways that they can fire. And when you do this, when you have them fire in less than ideal ways over and over again, that's when you start to get problems. That's when you start to get pain. Or at the very least, here's the other thing. Maybe you don't have lots of pain, but your body's pretty smart. Your body will actually prevent you from improving because it's afraid to let you get stronger. Okay, so let me repeat that again. Your body has safeguards that help prevent you from hurting yourself. In other words, your body's always trying to only let you be as strong or exert as much strength as it feels it's safe to do. So if your recruitment patterns are off and you're doing all these hard workouts, you'll hit a faster plateau than if you train in a balanced way. In fact, one of the ways I've ever – that whenever, whenever I've trained advanced lifters – one of the ways I've always got them stronger was just on helping them with more mobility. All of a sudden, I got that weak link out of the way, and uh, you know their bench press was stuck at whatever pounds for a long time, and I got their, their stability a little stronger on their shoulders. Next thing you know, they went up 10 pounds just from doing that. So mobility should be a very – it should be part of any routine, but especially if you're training with a high level of intensity. It should be a part of your workout. In fact, uh, you know when we did our HIIT program – we put flow sessions in there specifically for that, mm-hmm. specifically because, you know, when you do the even even though we work we did program the workout ourselves and it's a great workout because of the intensity involved. I mean, hit training is the only type of resistance training that intensity is part of the, the name, right? High intensity interval training. We knew because of the way it needed to be performed that mobility was imperative because either the people following the program would maybe hurt themselves or they just wouldn't get the, the 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 results that they could get because 
their mobility was preventing them from getting there. Well, I, I just don't you guys remember? I remember when it when we first started doing it like crazy, you know, over a decade ago, and shin splints, knees bothering me, low back issues, hip issues. I they also I, I you know I remember this too when uh, I got involved with Orange Theory, you know, about five six years ago. Very similar. Now they they aren't exactly uh, hit, hit training, but very similar. They they use these zones where. And they have like block, what they call blocks, where they want you to push, mm -hmm. and you go all out. And when you go all out, you're sprinting on the treadmill or you're sprinting on the rower. Mm -hmm. right. And so they 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 have a a, a piece of hit training involved in it. And there is no attention to, towards mobility training. Mm -hmm. And I remember like you know every and everybody loves it at the beginning because you it, you are you're pushing so hard, you're burning so many calories. You know, if you if you're just halfway making an effort at eating better and doing it at the same time, most people are going to see somewhat of a change in that first four to six weeks. Oh yeah. But here comes at the hard plateau after that. You know, mm -hmm. and that they've been pushing their body that hard for a while. They've seen kind of results, and then now here comes all the tightness. Oh, Adam, yeah. every day after class, talking to somebody that has shin splints, or you know, I don't understand why my my knee is bothering me like crazy. I can't do the squat part. Um, I yeah. can't do that part now of the routine. Yeah, but. you turn the intensity knob up. You just have to account for the fact that any small compensation any small deviation in form and posture gets amplified you know 10 times that so no. you, you have to you have to just know that going into it like if i'm going to turn my intensity up now i got to really pay attention to my recovery process and by the way mobility done properly is is kind of a workout it's not a waste of time I oh mean, yeah you will sweat i mean yeah. again <laughs> in in our hip program we, we have what are called flow sessions Flow sessions, you are moving through mobility poses. You're going to get a workout. It's actually part of your routine and your workout. And the reason why I'm saying that is, I, as I know, I have to sell it to people who, are, you know, young people, right? Who are like, oh, I don't well, know especially with people in this mentality, I just want to just murder every workout. It's awesome. You will get faster results with proper mobility added to uh, your high intensity interval training. Well, program. You, you, we also have to talk about the people that are that appeal to this and that's you know this takes some self-awareness right if you're somebody who uh, loves this type of training you know you need to reflect and ask why yeah you know in, in my experience of training clients more often than not it's the type a personality it's the go-getter it's somebody who's already running it like high levels stress all the time go 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 that they want that extra hard push because they need that to feel like they did something or accomplished something and to be quite frank these are the people these are the worst people for this that's right these aren't the people that should be gravitating towards that and if you're going to and you're not going to take my advice and you're still going to go do hit training that was like why we implemented the flow sessions it was like listen if there's going to be people that are still going to go out there do this even though it's not the mm -hmm. best thing for the body at least at the bare minimum be take care of of your joints right now no make no mistake uh, if it's appropriate for you and you do it properly good programming with weights and you know incorporate mobility hit training when it comes to fat loss uh it, nothing burns calories faster and nothing causes a faster fat loss in a four week period of time than hit training it it, it, and it is here's the second here's the, the next part i said a four week peri period of training you got to keep it short Hit training is not meant to be all the time. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to be a 12-week program. Uh, on average, when I would train clients, I would have them do hit anywhere between two to six weeks. It was usually two to six weeks. Max, max, yeah. I might go an additional week or two, but never more than a couple months. There's so just I, a, a lot of wear and tear you're going to place on your body. I mean, if you just think about it, if you keep cranking that intensity knob up, 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 it's just it's going to catch up to you, and your your body's going to respond uh, negatively. It also just stops working. Well, yeah. I th I think of it the same, the very very similar to how we program the the du the durability phase inside um uh, Maps Performance. Right. I, that's I like how I like to peak a client. Exactly. It's like we've laid a really good foundation. We've been Built scaling volume over time. We've been slowly increased mm -hmm. intensity. Now, here's the peak of your programming. And so for me, it would always be the last two to four weeks that I run something like this. That's it. This is key now. If you're going, if you're doing this right and you want to get a short burst of fat burning, a short burst of accelerated results in terms of body fat percentage, you're looking four, six weeks, maybe a week or two longer than that max. You got to keep it short. Hit training now. If you're training for performance, if you're an athlete, yeah, you hit training is kind of going to be a part of your repertoire throughout the whole year. 
But if you're learning to get, if you're looking to get the fat loss effects, if you do it for too long, here's what happens. Your body starts to adapt, mm -hmm. stops working, and then because you're not doing the traditional resistance training, now you find yourself in a similar conundrum to when you overdo cardio. It just stops working. We also have to keep in mind when we compare ourselves to athletes and how they train. Yeah. They have different adaptation goals than we do. Totally. As the average person who's listening to this wants to be healthier, wants to lose some body fat, wants to build some muscle. That is not the main goal for most athletes. And so yeah. when you see them training and conditioning and pushing themselves to these extreme levels, it's we're talking about a, a different goal. Like if I'm training that person, I might go longer than four or six weeks with them because I care more about replicating game time for them. I know at some right. point in their game, they're going to want to quit because their body's fatigued and tired. And so I'm pushing them through this workout to get the, to emulate a similar feeling they're going to get during game time. And it's more of a mental push than it is it's, anything else. It's still calculated, though. It's still calculated how frequently you use that button because right. it, you need to establish that f like foundational strength. You need to f establish that type of, of movement in different directions and strong uh, in different directions and then build yourself and peak yourself uh, going into a season you want to save that and so uh you know to a lot of uh, strength conditioning coaches out there uh who just constantly condition and, and beat their their athletes to death uh, there's a much better way to do it so i would challenge even that uh in terms of like that mentality yeah keep it short uh if you push it too long you might start to notice even some muscle pair down which then kills your your progress but if you keep it short it's very effective like i said four six weeks you know, maybe a week or two longer than that, that's where you're going to reap all the benefits. After that, move out of that and move into a more kind of traditional type of routine. Now, the next thing to focus on with HIIT training is that you want it to be anaerobic, not necessarily aerobic. I think a lot of people, when they do HIIT training, what they're looking for is the exhaustion. Yeah. They're looking for the exhaustion of their lungs where it's tough for them to breathe and, oh, I can barely move through each repetition. Of course, this leads to bad form. Cardiovascular exhaustion versus muscle fatigue, you, right? Right. You want to you wanna train your muscles, not necessarily the cardio. You want HIIT training is more like weights and less than cardio, okay? Now, it's more like cardio than traditional resistance training is, but it's not like cardio. It's still resistance training if you do it the proper way. So... Focus on that. Remember that. Now, why is that important? Again, too much aerobic training if your goal is long-term fat loss. By the way, nothing wrong with aerobic training. Uh, it's, it could be healthy. It's good for endurance. But if you push it for too long and that's your main goal, your body learns to become efficient with calories. It pairs down muscle. Um, and it, for most people that I've talked to, whose most people's goals are fat loss, they want to maintain it, they still want to be able to eat a normal diet or relatively normal diet, they don't want to have to eat super low calories all the time, that they don't want a slower metabolism. They don't want the super efficient, you know, metabolism that might may have benefited us when we were hunter gatherers. They want a metabolism that's fast, uh, and you get that from having more muscle. So you want to make sure that your hit training resembles more like resistance training and less than cardio, not the other way around. Because I see people do this in the gym, and the weights are just there almost as a prop. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's, it's really not that different from me being on cardio. It's just, you're have, just jumping with them now. Yeah. I have dumbbells on my hand or I have a barbell. Well, you gotta be careful of that too, right? This is just like why, you know, going all out on a treadmill, all out on a stairmaster, all out on a rower, all out on a jump rope, all are very similar. They're not that much different. And the, the, the thing that's beautiful about weights is that allows you to change the variables and make a big difference. But if you just do them in this fast pumping motion and you're you're combining it with things like burpees and jump boxes you're losing that you're losing it. then it's just like stairmaster right. it's not that much different than the elliptical at that point right now so here's how you judge that if you're not uh if this is kind of confusing um what is making you need to put the weights down is it that you can't catch your breath or is it that the muscle your form is starting to break right. down because your muscles are fatigued right it's very different right if it's like oh man if i if i if I could only breathe right now, I'd be able to do four more reps. Okay, you're doing cardio. Mm -hmm. If it's like, okay, this is hard. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely, my, my heart rate's definitely going up. I'm breathing harder than I normally would, but I could still go. But hold on a second. My muscles are getting fatigued. Then you know yeah, it's I more like I got to set like the resistance. weights down because my grip's sort of failing. Well, right. one, one of the best ways to make sure you're doing this right is to prioritize form. 
is, oh, to, yeah. is to make sure that that and that at foremost is the most important part of this. 100%. Even, even though we are following a hit protocol and we're trying to get the extra benefits of burning more calories and burning more fat by pushing yourself at higher levels, you still do not want to break the rules of good biomechanics. You do not want your form to suffer and that's where you learn to shut it down and i remember when we were programming hit that was like i remember one of the hardest things that were like how do we explain this to people yeah like how yeah. do we because we don't want people to think that we, we don't want them to go to failure of like uh you know exhaustion failure we want them to go to failure when the when their form breaks down form failure yeah, that's right form failure you want perfect form i mean in the worst form i ever see with resistance training is in hit style training. You saw this in the in CrossFit workouts, oftentimes where people are going from exercise to exercise, form starts to break down. It's only about doing reps. Um, you see this with circuit training, hit training, where again the exercise is almost seen arbitrary. It's just like pick the dumbbells up, do presses, pick the dumbbells up, do squats, yeah. you know, do some lunges, and you watch now go run and then come back, and you watch people's form go out the window, and and what becomes the priority are the reps. What's the priority is how many I can do. That is not the priority with proper hit training. With proper hit training, the priority is form. When your form breaks down, I don't care about anything else. Put the weight down and wait and then go again. And then when the form breaks down, repeat. What you don't want to do ever with resistance training is strengthen bad form. Yeah. If, you, if you get really good at bad form, it, it becomes harder to correct that than if you start. I'm going to make beginner. a comparison here. So think of kipping pull-ups versus a strict pull-up, right? I'm getting the benefits of of strengthening my back doing a strict pull-up, whereas in the mentality of a kipping pull-up, I'm just trying to do as many reps as I can to fatigue. Meanwhile, like my sh my shoulders are suffering as a result of that. Well, and right. one of them is going to develop your back a hell of a yeah. lot more, and one of them is just going to develop your gas tank. They're That's different. right. Right yeah, that's right. So form is absolutely crucial when you do any kind of uh, of training, especially when you're doing hit training. Again, because it's uh, it's it's a very attractive you know notion to keep going and push yourself. You say, oh, high intensity interval training. I got to keep pushing, and so it's we kind of forgive ourselves for bad form with hit training more so than we would with with traditional uh, resistance training. Not the case. It, you will not get better results if you throw your form out the window and push yourself harder. In fact, you'll slow down your progress. Trust me, listen to me. If you make form the priority with your HIIT training, not only will you get there better, but you'll get there faster. Well, and one of the ways that we addressed this in, in MAPS HIT was we had three levels, and we encouraged everybody to start with that level one and then to scale to level two and then scale to level three versus just going straight to what's the most difficult thing for you to do. Right, mm -hmm. right. In fact, uh, it's funny – when you know people were getting our hit pro by the way hit was a program when we wrote that program that one was one that we kind of struggled with a little bit because we know how abused hit training can be yeah. and we wanted to make sure that we delivered it and explained it so that people did it the right way we want people to train the right way so they get long term forever results you know we're not we don't care about the short term up and down type of bro uh, of of progress so when we designed hit that all went into the program, but it's really funny because when we explain how form has to be number one, and then we'd have people who listen to the show get the program, they would start with level one because they'd be like, all right, I trust you. It looks easy, but I'll trust you. Then they'd you know, write back and be like, oh, no, that was perfect. Yeah. Any more than that, and I don't think my form would have been a priority. When, yeah, when that's your mentality, it changes the entire format of the workout. And there is a, a, a the, there is a better way to do that style of training, and it's it's a valid way to train if you, know, you do it for the designated amount of time that's just enough, and you, know, you have these types of, of um, you know, parameters or around what your focus is and the intent of it as you go into the workout. Now, one of the things that I, you know, because we do kind of hammer, it's the only program actually that we have a warning on, right? It's the only program that we felt necessary to warn people that this is not something you want to stay in forever. But one of the things I do love about it is when you when you have limited space, limited time, or limited equipment, you can actually have a pretty damn good effective program. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the hit workouts are either like a dumbbell, a barbell. I think. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and so body weight stuff. Body I mean, weight's yeah. super, super home gym uh, friendly or minimal equipment friendly. It's still resistance training, but uh, we we wanted to write it that way for two different reasons. Remember, we created the program before gyms were closed down and that stuff. So it wasn't like we wrote the program thinking, oh, people aren't going to be able to go to the gyms. We thought to ourselves, for, for proper hit training, 
you want to move from one extra exercise to another. Uninterrupted. Uh, yeah, if you do machines or you do different exercises, that means you have to wait for the guy or girl that's on the piece of equipment before you move into the you know your exercise. Now that's going to throw you off your your sequence. It's no longer hit training anymore. Now it's traditional resistance training. So if you just have one barbell or a couple pairs of dumbbells to yourself, you could do the whole workout in your little square, you know, realm of, of, of exercise space or whatever. Yeah. Um, well, it just so happens today, a lot of people are working out at home. So that program now is extremely valuable because it doesn't require a lot of equipment. Um, and again, uh, a phenomenal short term fat loss program. Uh, I think the whole program is six weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Is mm -hmm. it six weeks long? I believe it is. I believe it's about six weeks long. Um, we'll, we'll have Adam uh, double check that, but um, it's yeah, a, I think it's four to six weeks, yeah, right? depending on how you use it. It's a short term, very fast, high calorie burning routine. Um, of course, it comes with all the demos and, and all that stuff. And because we're, uh, it's, we're in June and it's the beginning of summer, we're putting that program 50% uh, off. So it's half off. So if you want a hit program that's done properly, you want to have flow sessions so you don't hurt yourself, you want to follow a uh, well programmed workout with weights so you don't send the wrong signal to your body um then you can check out our program at oh and the and, and the flow sessions to me i think are the the, the diamond in the rough here that was m one of my favorite parts mm -hmm. that we incorporate because it's every other day so you do a, a hit workout one day and then the next day you have a flow session and then you have a hit workout then you have a flow session and then we actually program goals for yourself for like steps like going out and walking on the weekend so that's kind of how the program's laid out and it's broken up in three phases every two weeks. So it's a six week program mm. and it's broken up in three different phases. So two week phases. And again, I, I always recommend that people start on the, the, the more beginner side. Even if you're an advanced person, if you haven't been training hit style, start off with it in level one. You can always progress yourself to level two and level three. And and honestly, put more energy and effort into the flow session. Oh, yeah. If there was ever a time for you to really focus on that, this is great while we're all still a lot of places are still shelter in place where we have minimal equipment or gyms aren't open. Still a great time for you to be working things like I that. I love those. And many of the movements in the flow sessions are, are yoga inspired, but there's lots of tension and control yeah. within them as well. If you want to follow our HIT program, again, we wrote it so we know it's good. You can go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com and use the code HIT50. That's H I I T. Five zero. Also, you can find the Mind Pump Podcast on YouTube. We're also on video. Come check us out, Mind Pump Podcast. By the way, on our Q&A episodes, oftentimes we break up uh, those segments. So you can just look up one question that we answer so you don't have to listen to the or watch the whole episode. So make sure you check it out.